the last time that we were together, we learned about a graph. And we learned that a graph is a chart that helps you write down your information or it helps you keep your information or organize your information in a way that it's easier for you to find out answers to questions, okay? For example, when we made our uh, graph over about the orange and green cubes, we were able to find out which one cubes we had more of and which ones we had less of. I just want to remind you about a couple of things uh, when you are making your own graph. Remember, you could graph whatever objects you have at home as long as you could put them in categories and then go ahead and draw your own graph. So here, one of the things I want you to remember is that when you are counting your objects or your, um, uh, your objects or your objects in your category, I want you to remember that you're only counting what is inside of your graph. The drawings or pictures you see outside are just a reminder of which categories you have chosen or which categories you have. So in this case, these two are just a reminder of which categories I have. So here I had green cubes and here I had orange cubes. Same here, friends. When we put this graph together or we made this graph, we made sure that when we counted, we only counted what was inside the graph, not what was outside. The outside just shows the categories, okay? The other very important thing is that you, when you put your objects down on the graph or when you draw them, you must go left to right, left to right. Just like when you write a story or a sentence, you go from left to right, or even when you write your name, left to right, left to right is the rule at this Mesa Robles School. Remember, we said that rhyme many times. So you always start left to right. Do not start putting your objects over on this side going from right to left. Always left to right, left to right, okay? And that's how you count them as well if you need to count them. Okay, boys and girls, great review. Now let's take a look at our essential question for today. Again, remember we are talking about graphs, but today our question is a little different. Let's read it together. How can you read a graph to count objects that have been classified into categories? So now we're going to practice reading a graph. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look here at our graph. And we could read our graph. The title says red and yellow counters. So that tells us what this graph is about. We know that this gra graph is about puppies. No, this is not about puppies. What is this graph about? That's right, red and yellow counters. So this is about red and yellow counters. Now it tells us that we have two kinds of counters, two categories. What is one category? That's right, red. This shows red category and we have yellow category. Okay, so we know that there's two categories, red and yellow. So now if we want to know how many red counters we have, where do we begin counting? That's right, inside the graph. So let's count, ready? One, two, three. That's one way of counting, one by one, okay? How else can you count? That's right, you can look here and you know there's five spaces and two are missing, so this tells you that there's three. So now let's go here, we can tell that we have three, okay? There are red, red counters, there are three. Okay, now let's look at our next category. And remember, we are learning to read the graph. Okay, so when we look here, we know that we have how many yellow counters? That's right, four. How do you know? That's right, you can count one, two, three, four. And remember, we are only counting what's inside the graph, not what is outside. These are the categories, only what is inside. So let's count them, ready? One, two, three, four, good. And now we're going to write 
four here. Now, now that we have already counted and written our numbers, now we can answer some questions. Which category has more counters? Which category has more counters? That's right. The yellow, how do you know? That's right, because the yellow has four and the, the red only has three. And you know that four is more than three. Very good. Now, how do you know which one has less? Which category has less? That's right, three has, I mean, uh, red has less. How do you know that the red category has less? That's right, because that's three, and three is less than four. Very good, boys and girls. Let's take a look at one more, okay? This time, okay, our title is a little bit different on our graph. It says counter colors. So now our categories are about the colors that we have. So we know that we have some, what color? Yellow counters and we have some red counters, right? Okay, now remember, we need to find out how many yellow and how many red. So let's take a look. If we want to know the yellow, where do we look first? That's right, on the top of the graph because that's where the yellow ones are. This is the category, so where do we begin counting? That's right, inside the graph, ready? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five. Good, that's one way we can count by ones. What else can you use to count? Oh, that's right, you already know that this is full and there's five there, so you know that we have five yellow counters. Okay, now let's take a look here. Does this graph tell us how many red counters we have? Yes, it does. And where do we look? Right at the bottom of a graph, we can look down here. So here we see the category of red and we can count to find out how many we have. Ready? One, two, three, four. Now we can write four here. How else do we know there's four? That's right, one is missing here, good. Okay, so we can write four here, four. Now, can we tell by looking at this graph what color or what category color we have more of or which one has more? That's right, the yellow counters. How do you know that the yellow counters has more? That's right, because five is more than four. Now, which category color do you have less of? That's right. Red, how do you know? That's right, because four is less than five. Very good, boys and girls. Now remember, you have just learned how to read a graph. And it's important that you're looking at what is inside the graph, not what is outside. And make sure you read the title because that tells you what the graph is about, what the information is about, and then you can answer the questions better, okay? Good job, boys and girls. See you next time.